The Innovators Network. Welcome to the Killer Innovation Show, the longest continuously produced podcast in history. Each week, Phil McKinney brings you the insights and strategies to amplify your creativity and innovation skills. Here's your host, Phil McKinney. Welcome to the studio. We are still here in Colorado. We're actually getting ready to head out on the road. We will uh, be pulling out uh, soon in a handful of days. Um, in the mobile studio, which is a 45-foot uh, Prevo entertainer bus. So it's the same bus that rock stars uh, travel around in. Um, and we've modified it so it has our studio in it. And it also has a Zoom room in it. So we actually will be on the road um, probably six, seven, maybe even eight weeks. Um, traveling around primarily from Denver to the East Coast. Stopping off and finding innovators who've got interesting stories. So I would love to come to your neck of the woods, just let us know if you've got an interesting story or know somebody uh, that has an interesting story. We have a fairly big event coming up in Richardson, Texas. We are looking to be there the full week of Labor Day week, um, doing a combination of interviewing um, technology, innovation, companies in the Richardson, Texas area, along with running a hackathon for uh, a charity nonprofit that I'm the chairman of the board for called Hacking Autism. You can hop on over to hackingautism.org, or you can hop over to the Hacking Autism community. That is community.hackingautism.org, community.hackingautism.org to get more information. Um, So let me give you a little context. Uh, In the past, I've shared about some of those things that I do with companies, which falls into two buckets, innovation coaching and innovation mentoring. Now you're going to say, what the heck is the difference between innovation coaching and innovation mentoring? Innovation mentoring is myself mentoring executives, mentoring one-on-one with executives. So that is uh, somebody who is, um, I I do CEO mentoring, not so much. I'm primarily focused on innovation mentoring. So, So this would be somebody who is maybe the chief innovation officer, maybe the chief technology officer. Um, who is within an organization whose role includes or encompasses um, innovation, innovation efforts. So it's things like, how do you build a team? How do you establish innovation cultures? How do you structure um, your innovation pipeline? How do you as an executive inspire? How do you create executive presence? So when you talk about innovation, people get excited. They buy in. They support your efforts. That is innovation mentoring. Innovation coaching is around a project. You need a new product or a new service, or you've got an existing effort and you're struggling. Um, in many cases, um, I've been uh, invited to you know, participate or even facilitate um, the, the projects um, and, or contribute, be uh, an innovator generating ideas that get uh, prioritized in some cases, um, helping connect with uh, third-party resources to get proof of concepts built, hardware and software and, you know, all kinds of stuff, and do design work. Uh, I originally started off wanting to be an architect, so I'm very visually oriented. So for some reason, I get pulled into design efforts. So This episode is sponsored by Zoom. With Zoom, you can streamline your communication, collaboration, and creativity all in one place. Zoom is the market-leading platform that provides video meetings, voice, webinars, and chat across desktops, phones, tablets, and conference room systems. To learn more about Zoom and sign up for your free account, visit KillerInnovations.com slash Zoom. Today's topic is really around innovation coaching. Innovation coaching. And this particular uh, topic for today is around creating the innovation or creative brief. The innovation brief, creative brief, whichever term you want to use. This is the document you would give to your innovation team or someone in your organization would give you that defines a project, a problem area, an area of focus that you need to, uh, that that you're looking for an innovation, a new product, a new service, a new way of 
of distributing, a new business model innovation, whatever it is, the key to start with is this innovation brief, or in some contexts, people will call it the creative brief, and it defines it. So what we're going to talk about today is I'm going to share with you the nine key elements of successful innovation and creative briefs. What are those nine key elements? And if you spend the time, one, requiring people to give it to you if you're going to be the one innovating, or if you are going to retain an innovation coach um, or an innovation firm, this is the briefing document you would create to them to make sure you generate success of your innovation efforts. Before we jump into today's episode, got a favor to ask. Can you like, follow, and share? Is there somebody maybe within your organization or somebody in your broader um, social media community that would benefit from this show? If so, please share it. Let them know. It would help us uh, make uh, more people aware of the show. Yes, we've been around for 16 years. You would think everybody knows about us, but there's always new people. Uh, getting into the innovation game that we hope could benefit not only for this show, but the fact that we have 16 years of archived shows to learn everything about from innovation metrics to innovation, how to create innovation cultures within an organization to how do you convince your CEO to allow you to create an innovation team. All of those in the archive um, for Killer Innovations. So, again, if you our fan, please like, follow, and share. And with that, we're going to jump into today's episode. I love innovation coaching. In my mind, innovation coaching is working with organizations around a very specific project. That's different than innovation mentoring. Innovation mentoring is mentoring executives as about innovation as a career, innovation as a skill that will have a long play. Innovation mentoring typically will cover um, working with somebody over multiple positions, even multiple organizations. Innovation coaching is about working on a very specific innovation project. And I love innovation coaching. I do a lot of innovation mentoring also, but I really like innovation coaching. Again, it's working with organizations to help them innovate, innovate a new product, innovate a new service. In some cases, this leads to a role where I may sit on, on an advisory board. I don't take board of directors positions, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes with the right company and the right executive and the right introduction, I do take advisory board roles. Um, and I've done this with for-profits and not-for-profits, um, et cetera. Some of them you may have seen. So if you've ever been to the museum in Washington, D.C., um, it recently closed down. It's going into a different direction. Um, but the museum right there, beautiful building. Um, it's now part of Rutgers University, um, that building and that facility and all of its capabilities. But at the museum, I worked with the museum to design the, the new media exhibit. So this was designing technologies like big 45-foot wide touch walls that allowed 100 simultaneous touches. So you could have, you know, adults and kids, you know, touching and interacting with digital media. Um, and we were teaching, <laughs> starting, at, this project started 10 years ago. The whole purpose of the exhibit was to teach people on how to be discerning about news and information and what was true and what was not true on the Internet, way before the time of, of the whole, uh, um, you know, not, you can't believe everything you read on the Internet uh, kind of uh, uh, things we've seen most recently. So I, did, I, I led a team. We designed the entire exhibit. Um, I've also done some other fun things. Many of you know I started off my careers uh, wanting to be an architect. So I come from a design uh, background. And so uh, a close friend of mine, Richard Edelman, he's the owner of Edelman as an agency. They're the largest privately held PR agency headquartered in New York. Their headquarters used to be right in Times Square. 
Um, they moved their headquarters down um, down to uh, on Hudson, and uh, <laughs> Richard asked me to come in and design the lobby. They wanted a, a technology immersive experience, really kind of an exciting lobby space. And again, this has probably got to be 10, 12 years ago. So we again did big touch walls and kind of had a, a certain feel we wanted to achieve. Also to allow the lobby to be used not only as a welcome to Elements headquarters, but you could um, stream in um, all of the um, uh, other offices, Element Chicago, Element San Francisco, etc. And this was before Zoom even existed, so we didn't have uh, Zoom capabilities back then. But it was pretty exciting. The Wall Street Journal did a nice article on it. And I've done a bunch of these where it's been friends or contacts or uh, relationships or something where I've come in and, and provided this innovation coaching um, activities. Now, what I've also have learned over doing, you know, probably literally hundreds of these with different organizations, whether it's just coming in to help on a project that's already underway and they've kind of got themselves stuck or to be at the very front end to help them actually conceive of a new product, new service, new experience that they want to create. That there's a, there's a fundamental secret. If you want, if you're going to look for help, or even if you're going to, you know, give your internal team some guidance and some direction on what it is you're looking for around the output of an innovation effort, the key, the secret to making that a success is, and it starts with thorough and a well-thought-out innovation or creative brief, whichever term you want to use. Now, if you are involved in particularly large organizations, you're probably familiar with the term creative brief. I'm kind of hijacking that and tacking tacking on innovation. What are these briefs? These briefs, these are documents. This is information that you would share with the team, whether that's an internal team or you're going to an outside agency. You want a new logo built, a new website built. Or if you were to come to me and said, hey, we would like to contract with your services to help us as an innovation coach around this thing. The first thing I would ask you is show me the brief. Show me that innovation creative brief. The information that I'm going to need to know what is it you're looking for? What what give me some history of your organization, etc. So there are nine key elements of a successful innovation brief or creative brief. Again, whatever term um, you want. This brief is a document that explains kind of the ins and outs of a project. It is the audience is the creative team. It could be an agency, a designer, your internal innovation team, your internal engineering team, but this is a key key document. And do not shortchange it. Don't whip it out in 5 minutes and then send it off and then wait for magic to happen. Spend the time really thinking about this, really understanding. Um now, it not only helps the the creative team, the innovation teams that you've engaged, but it also helps you kind of think through what the overall objective is. What is the goal of this effort? Not just, hey, hurry up and come up with a new product idea. I've seen lots of those. The output from those is terrible. You really have to think about what it is. What's the objective? What's the goal? of this effort, this innovation effort that you are going to kick off, that you are sponsoring. Or if you are an innovation consultant yourself, you were, you're working with uh, companies to help them uh, you know, actually innovate. And I'm not talking about teaching them to innovate, but if you are actually an innovator and you're selling your ability to innovate as a service, you should be asking those clients for where's the brief? Show me the brief. And maybe you just send them this video and they kind of understand what it is you know, you're asking for. Now, these briefs, they take a little bit of time. Like I said, this is not a, a 10 minute, you know, you know, whip it out in an email and you're done. 
But trust me, it is well worth it. You know, in some cases, when I ask a, a, you know, a company or an individual for a brief, they don't know where to start. They just don't, you know, so I will sit down and through a series of questions, I'll actually help them construct the brief. So then we have kind of an understanding of what it is and what the expectations are and enough background and context. Um, but again, it helps you set the objectives and kind of shapes the uh, projects. It's going to take time, um, but it helps you really align the business needs. What is it? What's driving the need or the desire for this uh, project? And again, it makes the whole process smoother, right? So if you're doing, you know, if you're a, uh, an innovation um, uh, if you're going to consult or you're, you're going to coach, if you're an innovation coach on a project, um, you want to make sure that there's, it's clearly understood up front. Now, this is not a, a statement of work. This is a creative brief. It has a different feel to it. And we are actually going to uh, get into that here um, in a second. I just want to make sure you understand the context. Also, what I have found with the briefs is, is they save time. They save time. They will um, make sure that everybody's on the same page. Everybody has um, the, uh, the the context. Everybody understands uh, what you're, what's being looked for, what the expectations are. So what are these nine elements in, the, uh, in this brief, in this innovation brief, creative brief, whatever you want to call it? First off is, number one, describe your organization. If you're a company or a government agency or not-for-profit, an NGO, whatever, describe the organization. You've got to surprise, provide some context, some background information. Um, they need to get a better understanding of your business. What is it you do? Um, your history. Um, your other service, products, programs that all get wrapped around. Um, you know, what are these, what are these things that you do that, that kind of need to be understood in the context of this new creative innovation, um, effort? Um, yeah, something as simple as just giving links to the website could be, um, immensely helpful. You would not believe when I get calls from people that say, you know, hurry up, we need you. Are you free on Thursday at three? Um, and they don't even send you a link to the website or give you any context or any information. So give some background on who your organization is. Um, don't make it marketing fluff, but, you know, you want to give some context. Current products, current services, your history, the markets you serve, maybe some recent press coverage. Give some context of who you are. Number two, summarize the project. What is the project? You know, why do you need it? What's what's the catalyst? Is this a new product? Is this a new service? Um, is this enhancing an existing product or service? You know, maybe, you know, there's been some competitive actions and you're looking for something to kind of refresh, differentiate an existing offering that you have. Whatever that is, put that uh, and describe that. Summarize the project. Why, you know, is it that you are, you're doing this? Um, you know, again, you want to describe what the project is. What does it entail? What are you looking for the scope of this project? And why are you doing it? What's the motivation? What's the driver behind this project? That's number two. Number three is explain the objectives. And this is the most important part. This section is the most important part. You need to think through your strategy and objectives completely. You really need to understand what is the objective? What are the goals for this? What's the strategy? So you're answering questions like, why do you need this project? What are you hoping to achieve from it? What, you know, if you painted the, the picture at the end, this project was successful. What is that achievement at it? What are the goals? What are you hoping, you know, you know, you know, what are you hoping to solve? What's the problem you are trying to solve? Be be descriptive. Now, in some cases, I have found that some organizations 
are embarrassed. They don't want to admit they even have a problem. So they'll try to sugarcoat it. Like, we've got this great opportunity. And well, you know, why? Understanding why. Well, you know, we haven't done a lot of innovation. Our comp- We've got new competitors and we're down 30% in revenue and blah, 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 blah. Right? Don't be embarrassed. You are better with your innovation coach to share all of the issues. Be transparent. You want an innovation coach you can trust, right? They're not going to use this against you or look down upon you, but that's context that's critically important when defining the objects, objectives of this particular project. You know, and then key, 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 key. How will you measure success? How will you measure success at the end of this project? What is What does success look like? And a good innovation coach will give you feedback on whether that's even the success that you're looking for, whether that's even reasonable, whether that the time frame is even um, uh, fit. Um, I recently, I've been coaching a CEO for a small organization recently. Uh, They came in after the previous CEO retired. When they came in, you know, they wanted to kind of reignite the organization. Um, with all forms of new programs, new products, new things they wanted to launch. But right out of the gate, you know, the, the new CEO comes in and finds out that the entire organization is just in financial shambles. There's no money in the accounts. The board of directors um, has basically not provided good governance. Um, the board, um, you know, was really not effective. Um, and this person came to me like I got I'm I'm, I'm gonna quit I need to I, I'm not gonna do this and we sat down over a couple of days and had some good conversations and I shared with them I said look you know um, you can quit that's perfectly valid you were brought in under false pretenses but I think you should also think about this as a real career opportunity because if you can turn this around that can give you the confidence that just is immeasurable uh, you know, going forward in your career. So they decided to stick it out. And they were saying, well, I need to get this turned around in a year. And I said, well, that's just not realistic. I said, what I would, the goals you should be setting, you know, replacing your board of directors, re-looking at all, everything the organization does and stopping the things that bring no value and putting more effort into things that do bring value, restructuring, restructuring your staff, replacing staff, reskilling your all these things. These things will take time. You want them done in a year, not going to happen. I said, realistically, you need to be thinking like three years. Get this organization turned around. Well, this just this last weekend, that particular CEO reached out to me three years almost to the day, and they showed me the checking account. Very well funded, great incoming revenue, extra cash in the bank, building up a nice cash reserve, three years. A good innovation coach that's been around the block a few times will give you good, honest feedback and help you set that expectation. We all want the big bang. The reality is these things take time and you have to have patience and you have to have perseverance. You got to stick it out. So, be clear. Explain your objectives. And the key there is, is how will you measure success and work with your innovation coach to really understand what is reasonable given the coach's experience? Because you want to find a coach. I'm going to get on my soapbox here. If you are thinking about going to an innovation coach, bringing an innovation coach in to help on a particular innovation effort, First question you should ask, and I've got a great article on this over at philmckinney.com on my blog. The first question you should ask is, is give me a list, show me your portfolio of innovation projects you led. You led. You're asking a coach to be a leader that they have led. If they are an innovation coach, but they have never been part of an organization that has uh, been successful in the context of how you want to be successful. They're not bringing that experience. You know, they may have been done a couple smart startups and I've been an entrepreneur, so therefore I could be an innovation coach. Not the case. Not the case. Ask the question. Ask for proof. Ask for the portfolio that you can go look at. In my case, go look at my portfolio. 
You can go to techtrend.com, T-E-C-H-T-R-E-N-D.com. Tech Trend is my LLC um, that I do a lot of my work and efforts through, um, and I do my investments. It's all my it's where my venture fund sets. So you can go over to techtrend.com. You can take a look at the portfolio. There's only like two or three projects. I'm, you know, there's like 150 that I've done, but I've only posted like two or three. I don't. I'm not out there selling my services. So don't think you're going over there to get promoted or whatever. But you know, you can just kind of see. Do have they done projects? Can you see some tangibles? That's what you want because if you're setting the objectives and you're expecting the coach to to give you feedback, what have they done? So again, number three, most important one, explain your objectives on the project. Number four, define the target audience. So here's a, you're defining this problem, this thing you need. What is the audience? What is the, who, who's going to get the benefit of this? Is it your existing customers? Are you looking to go into new markets? Is it maybe something you're doing for your, you're going to innovate a way to interact with your Suppliers that you know are supplying you raw commodities, or you're looking for, um, you know, innovating the way you deal with policymakers. You know, if you are in a regulated industry, whatever it is, who is that target audience? Define them, describe them. Um, who are you trying to reach? Share some demographic information. What makes up that audience? Is it Industry commonality, is it purchasing approach? Are they a B2B? Is it a business that is a consumer? There's lots of different ways to chop it up. You can listen. There's been a number of previous uh, episodes of Kill Innovations talking about customer segments. Define the segment. Who are you defining as the target audience? Um, number five, define the deliverables. What is the end result that you're looking for? For this effort, are you looking for just a list of ideas? You know, that's a la what I recently did with the U.S. Marine Corps because I wasn't going to be spending the next uh, five to eight years implementing uh, change with the U.S. Marine Corps. The U.S. Marine Corps had two objectives. One was innovate ideas about um, creating significant efficiency and reducing the time for procurement. If you're procuring things for the military and uh, technology is changing at such a fast pace, you got to pick that pace up. So that was the objective. But this had a secondary objective. Secondary objective was teach my teams at the Marine Corps how to innovate, how to use the FIRE framework, how to run and facilitate an ideation um, session. And with these ideation sessions, then, um, you're, that's where you're generating these ideas, right? And how do you then rank them? And how do you prioritize them? And how do you push them into execution, right? So there was two joint objectives, but the deliverable were, were training. And secondarily was a prioritized list of ideas. So we did both simultaneously. We taught how, and we actually generated the list of ideas. And that was clear. We were trying to solve a very specific problem. People who submitted the ideation were people within the Marine Corps, and we contributed people from outside the Marine Corps in order to bring those together and come up with what turned out to be some pretty exciting um, uh, ideas that the Marine Corps has now embraced and is in the process of, of doing. So again, what are the deliverables? Is your deliverable a uh, proof of concept? Uh, is it a vision video? So I do a lot of vision videos. If you're not familiar with the vision videos, you can, I think it's going to be over, just search for vision videos over at filmmckinney.com or you can go to YouTube. The most recent one was uh, four different videos called The Near Future. So you can just search for uh, the, near, the Near Future Cable Labs. I think it probably gets you the more accurate of the four videos. Or you can just say Near Future. Um, and you can see the vision videos. In some cases, some of the projects is come up with some ideas of what the future could be, you know, the kinds of innovations that you're going to work on. And you create these videos. These videos are as if you were out there in the future. So um, I do a lot of vision videos and I've done them for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. 
There's a series of five that I did right at the beginning when I came to HP for Carly. Um, I actually uh, helped um, provide some coaching advice and, uh, and uh, uh, et cetera, on Corning's The Day in the Life of Glass uh, video, if you've seen that one. Um, so I'm a big believer of vision videos as a way, and that sometimes can be the deliverable. Think about what the possible futures could be and then create these videos to actually help you communicate to others and get your teams inside your organization and even your customers, et cetera, excited about the, what the future you know, can look like. So what are your deliverables? Be very clear of your deliverables. Um, number six, identify your competition. Is there somebody out there that maybe, you know, is in your market? You need to create a differentiator product or experience to them. So you've got something um, that will attract or switch customers to you. Competition could be you want to go into a completely new area and there's somebody that's already established. And how do you think about um, innovating? I don't know, everything from the 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 business models to manufacturing, whatever. It's not always just the new product and services. Remember, we talked about it last week's show. Innovation is not just about new products, but um, in the case of identifying your competition, um, what are they doing? What what What's state-of-the-art already? Because you don't want to innovate something that's kind of a me too. What is state-of-the-art that's out there? And look at it. Look for what is that you know, the point of comparison, that point of differentiation, what are those things that you want to really uh, create the, uh, the the new innovations in that will give you uh, a meaningful and significant um, list? You also want to understand the trends. Competition is just about what they're doing, but where are the trends, right? They're doing, they did this last year, they did this this year, most likely going to do this next year. That kind of sets the trend, and you don't want to be on that trend curve. You want to step above that trend curve and do something of significance. Create something that will generate a wow, that will clearly get the attention of the marketplace. Um, Number seven, provide the timing. What is the timing? When does this have to happen? I need something in two years. I need this is long range. We know this is going to take some time. This is a a three to eight year kind of a thing. This is something I need in six months, you know. Set the timing, you know, and be realistic. Listen, if you've got a really good top-notch innovation coach, listen to that innovation coach. Listen to their advice on the timing, right? If they're truly an innovation coach, not just a leadership coach or a CEO coach or a CTO coach, this is an innovation coach, someone who's done it someone who's been in the seat right um who's done this who's delivered award-winning products who understands you know what it takes but you got to define that timing what is um that timing so when and that may be a little bit of a negotiation number eight specify your budget how much are you willing to spend because in some cases people say yeah well i can i can call up a thousand dollars but i need the world, you know, I need flying cars at a thousand dollar budget. Not going to happen. Now, for a thousand dollars, you you know, you might find somebody that might be willing to put you together some PowerPoint slides. You know, if you're lucky, and I don't even think you can do that for a thousand dollars. But specify your budget. How much are you willing, really willing to spend, and and what do you get for that? You know, and it may be, you know, I'm a big believer in stage gate funding, right? So you say, hey, I'll put. Twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars up front, and then you deliver that. And if that's really looking good, then the next phase is a couple hundred thousand dollars. If that looks really good, then we're you know a million dollars, ten million dollars, hundred million, whatever the what's going to take to bring whatever you're innovating you know to to fruition. And um, you need to set that budget you know up front, but you need to real be realistic about the expectations. You know, don't think you're going to get the entire design for a flying car for $1,000. Not going to, you know, happen. Um, and you need to understand that before getting started. Don't set the expectations and then, you know, get shocked when you get, uh, you know, the innovation coach and send you an invoice for 10 times what you're uh, you're expecting. And then number nine, um, 
list the key stakeholders, right? You know, this brief is coming, either you're developing it because you're going to bring a coach in from the outside or you're going to give it to your innovation team, or you are an innovation coach, or you are an innovation leader within an organization, and you're getting this document. The one thing that I immediately look for is, who are the other stakeholders? Who are the other people that need to be included in this? Because if if you are, let's say, the chief innovation officer, and you send me the brief asking for my help on creating new innovations, I'm going to ask, who are the stakeholders? Who are the other people that need to be part of this, that are effectively also um, the people that have got to approve and, and convince and get them excited, right? If it's just the chief innovation officer, and, they, and the chief innovation officer says, oh, no, no, just me, you just need to work with me, you're going to work, you know, and, you know, not, don't need to talk to anybody else, it's, you know, I'll tell you exactly what, no, uh, run, walk away, that's not, you know, it's a, always an ecosystem, an ecosystem from sales and marketing, and if it's a physical device, manufacturing and supply chain, it's customers, it's media. You know, I, I'll actually go talk to press and say, what is, you know, off the record, what's your perception of this company? What's this perception of this product? Give me some feedback. That's all part of collectively talking to the ecosystem. So who are the stakeholders that are um, absolutely so critically important? So again, number one, describe the, your company. Number two, summarize the project. Number three, Explain the objectives. What are the objectives? Four, define your target audience. Five, outline the deliverables. What are you expecting to come in? Number six, talk about your competition. What's the competitive environment? Both if your competitors, if you're in the market, or companies that are in a market, that, a new market that you're going into. Um, um, yeah, un, you know, identify your competition. Number seven, provide the timing. What is the timing? When do you need this? And be realistic. Don't, I need this in 48 hours and I've got $1,000 and I need you to come up with an idea, complete designs and prototype of a flying car. Not going to happen. Um, number eight, specify the budget. Be realistic. Work with your, in, your innovation coach to really understand what the right budget would be. And then number nine, list the key stakeholders. Now, this particular list actually came from, you know, there's a, you know, there's a pretty standard structure to uh, uh, creative briefs, right? And the order may change and the terminologies may change. Uh, so I'm kind of modeling this off of a very consistent structure to a creative brief, but specifically positioning it as an innovation brief. You, you know, you're wanting either you are receiving this brief or you're creating this brief in order to uh, solidify a team, solidify an organization to really go after and deliver a, uh, a, key, um, you know, a key project. So in my, my advice to you again is by thinking through and really elaborating on all of these nine um, aspects of your project, you'll be able to produce this innovation, this creative brief that's not only thorough, meaning complete, but effective. With a with a you know solid brief, you're going to help the team, your innovation team, your outside team, your internal team, deliver great results, and they're going to ensure that your project delivers the results that you need. The more effort you put into this brief, the more likely you are to have innovation success. Trust me, if you are an innovation coach and you get a well thought out innovation brief, creative brief, delivered to you from a client to ask for your help, I'm sure you probably jump up and down for joy. Success from really having thinking through what this project really is about, what it really, uh, what's driving it, how do you measure success, um, 
the the view of uh, ecosystems, all of the elements I've talked, all nine of the elements, absolutely critical. Do not overlook this. Do not go even into an ideation um, session without really thinking about all the elements that go into this innovation brief. You want to spend the time doing that. So that again, I just want to admonish you to really think about this. If you are an innovation coach, teach others how to create the brief you need. If you are inside of an organization and you're looking for an innovation coach or you have an innovation team, in this document you can use them internally. If you if you're bringing somebody in from the outside to coach a project, then take the time and create the brief. Everything we talked about in the main core part of the show today will be over in the show notes over at killerinnovations.com. So if you can't remember what you know part seven was or part six of a of a briefing document is, you can always jump back um, and hop on over to the website. Everything will be there. If you're interested in more about the, these kinds of briefs and how to create them and, and et cetera, hop on over to the innovators community. That's where uh, innovation leaders, people who've been innovators, um, you can find them. So you can go over to the innovators dot community. The innovators dot community. Um, and that community is hosted by the Innovators Network. The Innovators Network um, distributes this show plus other shows. But the Innovators Network also is made up of innovators. These are formerly or in some cases currently chief innovation officers, uh, CTOs that have innovation responsibilities. And everything from you know Fortune 50 companies um, all the way down into startups. Uh, but these are people who have proven track records for innovation. So if you're interested in an innovation coach or getting advice, um, you can find that over at the Innovators um, Network. Um, probably the best person to reach out to is Mark, who's the CEO there. So you just go mark at theinnovators.io. Mark at theinnovators.io. Uh, as I always wrap up the show, my one favor is help me pay it forward. Tell others about the show. I do this show, have never taken any money out of any of the sponsorships. Sponsorship pays for um, some of my uh, resources that I contract with to help out. Um, but anything left over, always get, it gets donated to the charities, um, Hacking Autism or the, uh, the schools in Africa that we, are, uh, that we have built and continue to build. So help me pay it forward. Um, let other people know about the show. One way to do that is to like, follow, and share. So like this episode, follow on whatever social media or sites like Twitch or YouTube or whatever, um, and uh, like this episode so other people find it and share it. Share it on your social media. Share it um, with your uh, coworkers on your internal corporate Slack. However, um, you I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'd also greatly appreciate your time. I know uh, your time is hugely valuable. I greatly appreciate it. So uh, thanks again. And also remember, we're heading on the road. If you've got uh, ideas or you've got a community that we could potentially, I'll be schedule a little tight. You know, we, we might be able to sneak our way through and meet some interesting innovators and interview them for future episodes of the show. Let me know. You can do that over at Phil at KillerInnovations.com. Just drop me a note at Phil at KillerInnovations.com. And with that, we will talk to you next week from the road. Bye bye. Podcasting nonstop since 2005. This has been the Killer Innovation Show on the Innovators Network. This show is distributed by the Innovators Network. For more information and other great shows and content, visit theinnovators.network.